Mr. Whitley, your, yes. your turn for a question, sir. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the question is, how do, in, with your experience, how do pHs vary by, by country, right? And where do you think the better, the better pHs, if that's what you want to call it, are, are from? Okay, that, yeah, that, good, good, good question. That, that, I'll probably bounce around a lot in answering that, because I'll probably try to, once again, I'm going to, I'm going to stereotype, I'm going to stereotype some people here, and, and then I'm, you know, everybody's, everybody's got a little good and bad about them, and all this is stereotypes, but the, the best pH, the, the best pH is the one that 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 you have the confidence in and you have fun with, right? I mean, that's probably the best pH, right? Because if you're in a good area and the equipment runs and the tracker's good and nobody's busy trying to get in your back pocket every two seconds trying to sell you, I mean, if you have a fair safari with a guy you like, that's probably your your pH, right? Um, you hunt hard and you have good luck, but generally speaking. Probably ought to attack this from south to north. So we'll start with South Africa. South African pHs, there is a lot of them. A lot of them. And quite frankly, probably some of the best and some of the worst, meaning a lot of outfitters will throw you with a 20-year-old kid that thinks hunting on his daddy's farm is – the equivalent of major league baseball and he doesn't know how to handle an adult and, and you're going to have a terrible uh, crappy spark, but he's got a pH license in South Africa. Right. And you also may get a guy that, that knocks down more animals in a season than any other pH in Africa. Their experience a good one on, on what an animal is going to do, how to find the best animal on this property or that property you know, they're dealing with a lot more than just the biology of the animals. It's, uh, there's lots of stuff going on in South Africa. So South Africa, quite frankly, has some of the worst and some of the best. Um, South Africa does not, South Africans typically struggle when they go up into Africa because of some socio, so how social dynamic problems with their perception of Earth, planet Earth. They do not typically work well with, with the, the local people up north where they can't speak the language very well. I've seen problems with that. Um, dangerous game is limited. When you come to your average South African, uh, dangerous game is limited. Um, but you're talking about a country that, that has some, of, some people that do more hunting days than anywhere else and practice it makes perfect, right? Um, moving, moving next to the north, which really would be Mozambique if you count the coast. So Mozambique pHs, you really can't say there's any pHs from Mozambique. Uh, I had one that worked for me and, and he was an immigrant. He left Zimbabwe and lived in Mozambique. Um, he wasn't even Mozambican. There's really no Mozambican pHs. Most of your, most of your pHs in Mozambique come from Zimbabwe or South Africa. I mean, I was a PH in Mozambique and still love to hunt there, but um, it, th that one you really can't say there's a Mozambique PH. Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe has the most stringent and most uh, – the best qualifying system under the old rules, which have changed a little bit and things have become a little different. The old way of Zimbabweans qualifying pHs and what their exams and field trials and what they went through created, it, it, it demanded that you loved what you did and you knew what you were doing. Um, and, and they tested you on it. It, 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 it. They probably had the best overall system. Disadvantage to, now Zimbabwe pHs, you know, 10 years ago, don't you dare 
if you're from another African country, don't you come to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is ours. It's for the Zimbabwe. I mean, we, this is ours. But then they love to go hunt somewhere else. So now Zimbabwe's went to hell, right? Zimbabwe has real problems with many things. Um, government poaching, animals, blah, the list goes on and on, right? But now they've they jumped fenced everywhere else, right? They're Mozambique, they're Tanzania, they're coming into South Africa. Um, so the problem with Zimbabweans is, the, is, is sometimes they, they truly believe that they were God's gift to hunting, and they, they, they take that a little far sometimes. Um, stereotyped once again. Some of the Zimbabwean PHs, legends. I mean, absolute legends. Um, you got guys like John Sharp. I mean, they're writing books about the man. I mean, they have wrote books about him for years. He's, he's amazing, right? He's like a no shit real Tarzan. Um, you've got, um, you've just got a lot of people that lots of dangerous game experience, um, very well-trained professional hunters. Um, the problem now is, is that country is not at its, at its highest point right now. Um, then you go to Zambian PHs. You're not going to find many Zambian PHs. Once again, uh, there's just not that much going on there. Um, then you got, uh, um, what's another? Uh, Tanzanian PHs. Tanzanian PHs in general, uh, I'd say a lot of them had a reputation for being lazy, quite frankly. That's the bad side. They, they got a reputation for for probably just being a bit lazy when it all comes down to it. And, and that's because people, people said that, you know, these Tanzanian PHs, they're used to finding a Buffalo around every corner and nobody, they don't want to work too hard or whatever. I, I think that that was true. Um, now, whether you want to call it maximizing your energy or whether you want to call it lazy, I don't know. Right. Um, the fact is nowadays with, with the reduction of areas and everything, you can't be lazy and, and put on a good safari. Um, some people are more active than others. The, so that, that would be Tanzanian PH has got a, had a bit of a stereotype for that. I would say Tanzanian PHs in general are, are very good on dangerous game uh, because they hunted every single day, just like uh, what, the older Zimbabwean PHs did. Um, they're, they're very uh, conscious of an overall operation of a safari, um, meaning logistics and, and lots of things that don't apply to maybe a Namibian or a South African hunt. Um, the, the, the other thing about Tanzanian PHs, and to some extent, modern Zimbabwe PHs, is let's talk about black PHs which you can call them native or whatever, but let's talk about, I mean, the black guys that are qualified professional hunters. Um, South Africa has a few. Um, Mozambique has a few. Zimbabwe has a few. Tanzania has, has more than a few. Um, one of the secrets to my success was employing very good local professional hunters. And I mean, these guys, the, to, to their abilities, some, their abilities are far reaching, more far reaching than, than, than your average white professional hunter. Now, once again, everybody's different. You get good ones, bad ones, lazy ones, uh, whatever. But if you get a local or a black PH, or, or to some degree, I mean, there's a lot of Indian or Muslim or Muslim is not a race, but obviously there's all these different colors and creeds of, of people in Africa. If you get a qualified local PH that has the experience, that can speak English, that grew up maybe in a village, right? Or maybe what they they can communicate and show you, they can communicate with the staff. They have a good command of English. They have the experience. They can show you things on a safari that quite frankly, I can't do. And I, and, and I, and I, I love what I do and I work really hard at it, but they know some stuff 
that I'm not going to know. And they're going to be able, they can interact with the staff on a level that I quite frankly cannot sometimes. And that has been a big secret to myself, to, to, to my success, to, to my to, to being able to employ good local PHs. So don't be fooled by a passport when it comes to a PH. Uh, get down to what he's good at, who he is, and, and what he can and what he can provide. That was like six minutes. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I, I didn't set, I forgot to set the timer. I've been drinking <laughs> a little whiskey, so I forgot to set the timer. But so, no, it, yeah, go ahead. But does that does that expertise carry over to the logistics and the and the pre planning and the, all all that that goes into before you get on the plane, you know, or leading up to that? Yeah, I, I would say no. I would say no because in general, those PHs are most PHs doesn't matter where they're from or what or what race or whatever their job is to guide the hunt the outfitter the outfitter is to sell and provide the pre-hunting information if you can speak with your ph extensively before your hunt your actual ph i think you should consider that is a true true luxury that is a true luxury in this in this industry cuz it is kind of stratified with outfitter and then pH. Um, now my local, the local pHs that that I've um, that, that that I've had work for me. I, I've had some work for me in South Africa. I've had uh, local pHs work, and, and I say local, I mean black pHs uh, work for me in South Africa. And then I've I've have some in Tanzania that work with us. And when it comes to the logistics of the on the ground operation. No, no, no problem at all. No problem at all. And most of them have the experience that they know KLM's flight schedule, right? They know that, that they know they know every logistic about it, right? Now you're not going to be able to probably get them on the phone, like maybe you get me on the phone for half of the year, but but that they really are true professionals and could, if tasked with it, see a client all the way through and be very willing to do it. The roadblocks on that are command of English. That's obviously a roadblock. Not everybody has a 100% command of English. Um, even though you can be a good hunter or a great tracker. Um, so yeah, you got to watch that on trackers turned into pHs. You got to watch on the finer points of communication. Um, that that's a mistake. Some outfitters will fall into hire to training trackers. And let's face it, it's called a professional hunter not because we're great at picking out the biggest Impala every time, which okay. you should be, but you should be a professional person that can handle a, a, a high level of, of everything. Stress, high level of personality, a high level of logistics, a high level of, uh, I don't know, well, and my, it in any way. My question was because with, with my hunts have been, I, from talking to other people, maybe I've been a little spoiled, right? My hunts have been with you and I've been able to, in the planning and the, the pre-trip, I've been able to text you or pick up the phone and call you. And, you know, in that planning phase, you're, you're available. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Whereas, it, 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 whereas I don't have to email or try and call at five in the morning or, or WhatsApp somebody, you know? Yep. And, and I, I think that uh, th that helps. And, and, and I like talking. I mean, I, I like talking to all the hunters. I like being involved because at the end of the day, I, I live in the United States of America. If things go south or bad, I am very, very easy to find. I'm very easy to find, right? I, I'm not hiding from anybody. Now, but most good outfits, most good outfits now do have, uh, you know, a lot of them have, in office that tries to operate at all hours because they recognize the time difference and the problems with communication. And then people are so spoiled with communication now that, that it's like they, um, they, you know, that they, they, they think it's, 
if you don't get an email back in 24 hours, it's like, well, hell, maybe my safari's off. No, your safari's not off. Everybody relax. You're, you'll get an email. Um, but most good outfits have, have recognized that communication gap and have addressed it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, and everybody's got a different way of laying out the information. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it is hard to say, I, you know, there, there's very few American pHs. There's very few Spanish pHs. There's very few German pHs you know, for people in Europe, right? I mean, there's, right. You, you, generally speaking, you're going to deal with an African. That, that's, I mean, you're going to deal with a person that was born in Africa. That's just, and then if you go with an agent, then you have the whole other, maybe that's an added level of protection or maybe it's an added level of room, nonsense. Room there, yeah. 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 So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a playing field that, yeah, that, that once again, it's <clears throat> to fit the person. Anybody else got experience on? Has anybody here hunted with a, with a? Well, nobody needs to throw out any names unless they really want to. But what did you like the most or the least about your pH? And I tried to give a good and bad side of each country. I hope I was fair. But you know there is a good and bad to every story. So if anybody, if anybody wants to chime in, I'd love to hear it. What was the best thing about your pH? And what was the worst thing? And what country was he from? So, sorry, go ahead. So, um, Nathan, I hunted in Namibia last fall, and uh, you know I suffer from kind of like late onset hunting, right? So, um, for me, it, it and I had native pHs, and it was an amazing opportunity in terms of like I felt like I got, you know, ten years worth of education watching those guys in the woods. Um, you know, these are guys who probably have been doing it, you know, one way or another since they were, you know, knee high to a grasshopper and being able to watch them track and see the way they spotted game and stuff like that, I thought was, you know, pretty amazing. So, so you hunted with a local pH, you hunted with a black pH on your first hunt in Namibia. Yeah, it was, I had two different black pHs. I mean, it was through an outfitter right sure. um so who was a german i mean namibia right um so you know i was staying on their property and stuff but on a daily basis i was out with uh native phs okay how did they handle so the hunting was a true asset right they showed you stuff mm -hmm. that, that your average uh german farm boy would have never known in a million years so he's showing you a lot of cool stuff you're getting on animals how was how was the other aspects of the safari as far as communication, enjoyment, uh, uh, personal connection? Did, did, how did all I mean, that go down? You know, I think, I think there, are good, there were good things and bad things. So, you know, one thing that definitely was, uh, I don't know if it was good or bad, but I, I was smart enough early on to set the expectation and like, you know, what was okay to me, right? So mountain zebra happened to be one of the things that was on my ticket, right? So we're driving around and we see some zebra and we're from the truck and they're 150 yards away and they're like, there you go, you can shoot one. And I'm like, that's not how I'm going to hunt them. It's like, you know, we're going to, we're going to park the truck and we're going to get out and walk and I'm going to find a mountain zebra. And that's the way I want my hunt to be. And as soon as I said that, they're like, they're okay, but they don't know because they have so many people who just do come and are okay shooting it from the truck. I don't think that had anything to do with the fact they were native or not. That just probably is more of a communicating with your pH, what your capabilities are, what your expectations are, you know, and um, that mountain zebra again ended up being one of my favorite species I took there, you know, we're sliding down rock shoots on our butts and it was a 300 yard shot off a of rock outcropping and I mean, it was really cool. Um, so, you know, so there's that side of it, I would say from a, you know, we had fun but there is definitely a person uh, or a communication gap there, right? You can't joke with somebody or have the depth of communication like that. For example, if I was riding in a truck with you, that we could have more banter, right? It's a little more business. There's probably a little more silence. Um, not in a bad way. It kind of gives you the opportunity for a little introspection and solitude, but I think it maybe depends on what you're looking for. Yep. Yep. So, uh, and that's, I think that's, yeah, I think that's an accurate answer because, uh, and the other thing too is, uh, a South African pH that, that you would have said, no, I'm not going to shoot that animal that way. 
nine out of 10, it'd look at you and be like, man, we got one of these here. I mean, it'd be like that. And that guy, that guy said, okay, he took no, I mean, there's no offense. There's no offense, right? It's a, it's, it's kind of a cultural thing. Um, he, he'll do it the way that you want to do it, but it sounds like they probably did not have enough worldly experience. They're an excellent guide, but those guys probably were not excellent professional hunters, which I think you take a step from a good guide to a professional hunter, in my opinion. Um, who, who else has, who else has had a who good and bad on pH here? I, uh, I just like to add, um, I, I hunted in, in Namibia with a, uh, a native or a, a black pH. Um, and, uh, um, I had the opposite problem of communication. Um, he, he, he loved to talk and he just, <laughs> he never ever shut up and, uh, and was always smiling. He was very personable, but, uh, you never, you never got a word in edgewise because he was telling you about everything. Um, but what, one interesting thing I found, um, and I applaud you for, um, having some uh, black um, or native uh, pHs is something I didn't think about is, but when I got home and I had pictures of, you know, me with a red heart beast and, and a, um, my black pH, um, you know, standing with me with the animal. When I was shown to shown people uh, those pictures, they would ask, well, who's that guy? And I would, I would say, well, that was my professional hunter. And they were going, well, uh, he, he can't be a, he's a, he's a black guy. And they he explained, no, you know, there are lots of, lots of pHs now are, you know, black guys. And they were, they really saw the, uh, my trip to Africa a little differently when they assumed that, you know, it wasn't sort of an elite white, you know, uh, white guy sort of walking around hunting. There was, it was a little bit more diverse as far as, as far as the outfitting going goes and, and the guiding goes. Yep, that that's a very good comment, and I'll add for anybody that may be listening down the road to, to say that you're black or you're white or to say that you're Indian. Um, in Africa, we can call it like it is. Nobody, for me to to, I don't have to say native or indigenous. I don't have to watch my words because there's no offense. A black pH, he's a black he's a black pH or a. He, he does not, there's no offense to that. So, I mean, you know, you can call him whatever makes you feel comfortable, but, but like, uh, it is a good point that this is not anything to do. Hunting is not anything to do with the power trip or being elite or being some kind of big wanna trying to recolonize Africa. I mean, it's, it's, it is a team effort and the local people, um, white phs black phs purple phs it's it, it really boils down to who to who fits to who fits you um and if they do a good job and you know they do a good job and you like them then it's a then it's a home run but it is africa and it is our job to see that africa is successful and you only do that through employing local people in whatever whatever aspect they are capable to deliver the services needed. And I was lucky, like uh, one of my PhDs, he, he, had a, he had a PhD in education. He spoke German, Swahili, English, and his local language. He could read and write. I mean, in fact, wrote a book. Like, I mean, he, could, he wrote a, a, I mean, like he, he's got a PhD, obviously he can write. Um, he just and also grew up in a village and knew how to track cattle since he was, you know, knee high to a grasshopper, like, like like Matt said earlier, right? I mean, he he had it all, and very uniquely, as a and very needed in a dangerous game situation, he could work a rifle. He was a good shot. He understood how to. I mean, he had enough skill to 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 work the gun. Um, he, he wasn't a great driver, but he could drive. He, he wasn't a mechanic, right? So everybody's got their good and their bad, right? I, I, I mean, my, my driving's horrendous, right? That's why I have a driver. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, no, you gotta, 
You got to do it. Uh, who, who, who else has a pH story? Good I, I would I would say this for for pHs on on my first trip to Africa. My my dad, my brother, and I went. Um, my 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 dad hunted with a black pH. His name's Hans Hans Moechi. He was excellent. He was outstanding. He'd been doing it for 15, 20 years. My brother and I, we both had a couple of young guys. And they were definitely trying to make their bones with their outfitter. You know, to say, we can get this, our client, we're going to get through his, whatever's on his package, and then we're going to move on to extra animals. And... You know, first time to Africa as a hunter, you don't know any better as, as the hunter. And I had a, a, a six animal package and we, you hunt in the morning and the afternoon by, by the, when we drove in for lunch on day two, I had four animals in the salt on a 10 day hunt on a six, on a six animal package. And, you know, he, he said, shoot. So I shot, yeah. but then we saw a lot, you know, nicer animals later. Whereas Han said, no, no. told my dad, no, no, we can do better. We're going to wait. And so my experience was that you really seem to ask the outfit you're going to hunt with. Yeah. This guy, like you were saying, he hunted all his life on his daddy's farm, but that doesn't make him a really good pH. He can be a good hunter but not necessarily a great pH. They would need, this is more for, for uh, um, Adam, who's going on a hunt. You want to talk to your outfitter and how many years of experience does that pH have and how many years does he have with you? Because every time you get a new boss, you're trying to make your bones, right? And if you go on a package deal, he's trying to say, yep, I can be productive. I can get it done for you. The guy's already made his bones. You're going to have a much more enjoyable hunt. On my second hunt, I went with uh, Charlie and I went with a group of guys from AH, and my PH had 15 years experience. I had a, I had a great time on both hunts, don't get me wrong, but I had a better time with Carlos than I had on my first trip. Yep. Now, ha having an experience, experience makes a big difference. I mean, for sure. And and it sounds, yeah, yeah, you, you made some very good points. I mean, that's, yeah, you, if you can, if you're fortunate enough to speak to the pH, do it and talk to them as much as possible. Yeah. But the pH doesn't decide the area. The pH doesn't market the hunt, um, yep. you know, in most situations. So, um, right. So like so, for Adam, yeah. I, would, I, would, I would tell Adam when you go hunt, I, I do a couple of things. If you talk to your outfitter, if they're going to pick you up at, say, Johannesburg, talk to your outfitter and have your pH come pick you up. Now you'll get two and a half, three and a half, four hours of riding in the truck with your pH, or you can start talking about the hunt and get that time in because you can't call him on the phone because he's out hunting. He's guiding other clients. So if you have that opportunity with your outfitter, see if you can get your PH to come pick you up from the airport. That might be the only time you have to talk to him before the hunt. Because well, I'll tell you, the favorite saying in South Africa is, let's make a plan. Yeah. <laughs> and you do it over yeah. coffee and rusks in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and no, so I, I, I really, it, it's, it's very important that, you decide what you want to hunt. You decide where to hunt it from people who have been there and then pick your outfitter for good reasons. Does he run a good business? Does he have a good reputation? Does he have good areas? Does he, you know, he, he's a, he, he should be the business front of it. Then please, if you can talk to your pH period, because a lot of people miss the fact that this is your vacation, right? If you are spending your vacation with some guy you do not like, you're wasting your time. There's lots of PHs out there. There's lots of good ones. There's one that'll fit what you want. Talk to him and make sure you're going to enjoy it. Because hunting is hunting. It, it's sometimes easy, sometimes hard. 
you know, the bullets fall where they may, but but make sure you're with the the, the right guy in the field because that's who you're going to spend your time with. Um, all right, good deal. Thanks, for, thanks. Uh, with a good question. Um, I don't know if I left out any any countries there, but we 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 probably beat up the damn poor PHs enough. We'll, we'll give them we'll give them a break. We'll give them a break. What? Uh, all right, I think I I think we're either back to Drew. All right, I think we'll do two more, two or three more. What, uh, um, Drew, fire away. Okay. Um, back to sort of, I guess, uh, the last little bit about um, the actual shooting of the animal and the stalking. What would be, um, you know, the most common mistakes hunters make in Africa during that last sort of, five minutes between, uh, you know, in the stock and the shots fired. So what's the, what are the common mistakes that um, a visiting hunter makes that uh, say screws up a, 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 a hunt in that last five minutes, that closing this dis distance, you're getting ready to put your the sticks up. What, what do, uh, what's the common mistakes that, hunters make when they do that that you know ruin their chances yeah the okay um having the scope on high power because you were looking at a rock dassy two hours ago through the scope right i mean have your scope on low power that ruins a lot of prop that, that, that causes a lot of issues that field of vision that you achieve on low power is, is of the utmost importance. So if you turn your scope up, make a habit of turn it back down. Same, obviously safety first. If you put your gun on fire and it's a failed attempt to fire, please let's knock it back off, right? Um, an accidental discharge on the way up to an animal would be a, would be a bad deal. But the scope is a common thing. Um, not being close enough to me at the right time. You kind of have to get a feel for that, right? I mean, it depends on the animal, but when we're, when we're in the last 30 yards of a buffalo stall, I really want you right in my back pocket, meaning that I, I, I would, own, I mean, I, I just, I need you right, right, right there right? Because a half step at the wrong time makes all the difference in the world, right? So normally you, you'll walk apart from each other, but that last, like if I crawl, if I'm doing a butt down crawl and I, I don't want to look back and see your butt up in the air, right? I mean, that's not fair. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to have, I don't want to be doing the hard type of crawling when you're doing the easy type of crawling through the same hole for the animal to see us. That's not right. So I see that happen a lot. <laughs> now, if you tell me you're not up into butt down crawling, meaning that, that you're more of a, you, you, like you don't even want to do a duck walk. I need to know that in advance. Right. And we're not duck walking, but I'm not going to do it. So you don't, so you, I mean, we all going to do the same thing here. Right. So I mean, um, the scope thing, not being close enough. Um, what's another one? Uh, not not walking where you walk. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yes, for sure. If somebody cut, I mean, if I go by this tree, right? If I can see the animals and I walk past this tree, like I really don't want you to walk around the tree that way. Like there's a Maybe there's a reason I did that, right? And I probably did it because I saw my tracker walk around that tree and he's trying to look at the animals and he knows there's no snakes right there. And he stepped on the place that didn't have all the broken leaves and branches. Yeah. So, I mean, it's, it, it is time to follow the leader at that time. Um, the, the other thing would be in the moment of truth and or leading up to getting on the sticks is... I'm taking off sunglasses. My binoculars fell down. I'm trying to put in an earplug. Basically, 
not having your stuff together, right? I mean, have your stuff together. It should be a smooth transition to uh, be from right behind me to on the sticks to off safety to ready to shoot. Should be a very smooth transition. Um, we don't have time for sunglasses and earplugs and stuff like that. Now, if we're going to do that, I mean, then that's fine. It's your ears and your sun and your eyeballs. But I, I recommend that if you're going to wear sunglasses when you walk around Africa, then learn how to shoot with sunglasses on and shoot with them all the time. The same pair. If, if you, if you're like, I seriously do have hearing damage to people shooting next to my face. Um, and, and it's, I, I really have problems now and I'm way too young to be deaf. But the thing is, is that, well, I couldn't afford the electronic. I mean, I couldn't get my fingers in my ears fast enough. Now, if you want to use foam earplugs, or you want to use the headset, that's fine. But but have it on your head, right? Don't try to put it on your head after you're on the sticks. That doesn't work. So be prepared, right? Have your stuff in order to make the shot. Um, the the only the only other thing is just get excited. Now, if we didn't get excited, right? If everybody wasn't excited, then I don't want to hunt with you. If you're not going to get excited enough to maybe screw something up every now and then, I mean, go with the pH that doesn't get excited either, right? Because I like it. I get excited. You're going to get excited. Um, but try, try to keep your ears open to listen to instruction, even if you are super duper amped up, right? Um, if you weren't excited, I, I don't know why the hell you're doing it. Um, so there is some, there's some latitude given to every man in these situations, but have your ears open and be ready for instruction. Your pH should have an open line of communication to you all the time. And, and just cause he's not talking doesn't mean he's not thinking or, or trying to get you in position. So he's doing his job. You do your job. Good communication. Uh, yes. And no answers. Right. I, I went over a situation earlier with, with, with Mr. Frazier on, on the buffalo thing, right? The buffalo with the bird on its back. The one, um, I, it's it's really a yes or no, right? I don't have time to hear about the two other buffalo that had birds on their back 30 seconds ago, right? I, I don't want you to tell me that right now. I, I, I want affirmative or negative. Um, so short, and if you don't see something, if you, the other thing, this is real important. If you don't see something, don't tell me. I mean, don't him haul around about it. You are not expected as a client to see everything that the trackers or the PH will see. You are not supposed to. You have not seen it as many times. Um, you are not required to know or, or to answer yes or to be okay with everything, right? No, I can't make a 450 yard shot through brush off the top of this mountain. I'm not, no. But you have to tell the you have to tell the truth. If you really don't see what I'm trying to tell you about the buffalo next to the calf that has the bird on its back, no, no, I don't see it. I would rather hear no, I don't see it than yeah, yeah. Let let me mess with my uh -uh. your scope ain't gonna find that buffalo. Either you see it or you don't. Right? Crisp, quick communication. Um, that was a good answer. Thank you very much. I'm going to have to uh, go put my daughter to bed, but uh, thank you very much for including me in this. It was very good. Yes, sir. Uh, appreciate it, Drew. I'm going to, um, yeah, I, I think uh, I'm going to stay online, but I think it's a, a good time to wrap it up here. So, um, guys, I appreciate it. Uh, once again, um, please please comment on the forums there. I really think this format is going to be beneficial. Um, the forums that, um, even though I asked for a PM, put some notes in there, say whatever you want, um, but keep those forums active for us. Um, once again, uh, hunting and conservation, it's all about participation, right? You guys participating, um, it, it, it helps hunting and it helps what we're trying to do. So once again, guys, I really appreciate it. Uh, this was a good second Zoom safari. Uh, 
And if, uh, if I can help you all with anything or you can send me some comments on how to make it better, I'd sure appreciate it. Um, I'll go ahead and end the recording here and, and thank you all very much. Good night. Yeah.